goodness. That is so big. If there's a fish that swims, I need to catch it. Fresh water, salt water, from a boat, from a kayak, or from four inches of ice. I thrive off the new experiences fishing gives me. I'm an ex-fishing guide turned videographer calling Lake of the Woods, Ontario my home. I'm Jay Siemens, and this is The Canadian Angle. This episode of The Canadian Angle has us crossing the border, but just barely. We're headed to Borderview Lodge, which resides on the American side of the Rainy River, just outside of Bedette, Minnesota. It's April, which is typically a crossover month for most fishing adventures, but for our target, it's prime time. We're after the mighty lake sturgeon, one of the biggest fish that swims in the fresh waters of North America. And just to put a little added twist on it, my buddy Ryan Lilly and I decided we should do it out of our kayaks. So that's a swollen river right there. I've actually <laughs> never seen it this high. I've been here probably a dozen times and never seen it remotely close to this. How often have you seen kayaks out here while fishing? I've never seen a kayak on the Rainy River actually, so we might be, I don't think we're the first ones, but I think people might look at us funny. <laughs> Especially with how uh, serious people take it around here. These boats are rigged. This? This is what we call a two. That's a hat. <laughs> I've confused so many people by this. They call them beanies in the States. We call them toques in Canada, but it's gonna keep me warm today. I think we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that one, but. It's crazy that it doesn't transfer over poutine. People know what poutine, are, poutine is, right? Absolutely. Poutine and toques. Two Canadian poutine and hats. There we go. Figuring it out. Be safe there. We're good? Let's do this. What's, uh, what's your top speed? 7.1, 7.5, 7.8, oh. eight miles an hour. I'm the Usain Bolt of the kayak world. So this area here is called Four Mile Bay, where it widens out. And then out there is the cut, that narrow spot. So we might go fish past the cut a little bit, but we'll, I mean, we'll see, see what's going on, see what we see on the electronics. Side imaging is really good for this because you'll see them just like logs laying on the bottom. Got it. And it's a really soft bottom, so they, they stick out really good. Where is the, uh, where's the international border? We're like pretty much, like the river split down the middle. So that shoreline is all Ontario. This is all Minnesota, but we're, we're right on it. Got it. Yeah, so I mean, as far as fishing, maybe to start off, we'll tie, tie our kayaks together. And we'll just, it's not the best for spreading out. It'll be a little bit easier for netting each other's fish. But then we'll see, we might want to spread out and we'll each throw an anchor and kind of cover a little more ground. But I mean, it's not deep water either. Like, especially here going a little further out, like we'll probably be fishing in 10 to 20 feet of water, pretty shallow. What's the record sturgeon out of this? I don't know. I've definitely heard of like mid 70 inches. I can't even fathom what that would look like. I mean. How old is that fish, you know? It's gotta be. They have some cool stag tagging studies that like, I mean, I've, you hear they can grow a hundred years. I haven't dug into the stats too much, but probably these fish we catch are gonna be older than us. Some of them at least. What got you into sturgeon fishing? Is it just based uh, on? It was just like the biggest fish, right? It's like everyone wants to catch a big fish and it was, close to where I grew up. I mean, a couple hours away. Yeah. And the cool thing about the rainy is that it opens so early. Like, the, so you know, in Manitoba, thing. fishing yeah. season open in May and in, in Ontario, like walleyes open like late middle of May. But now you could be out like end of April catching giant fish. It's often like the first trip of the year and stuff for a lot of people. So, so this is just your slip sinker rig. So it's just a weight. It's just a catfish rig, whatever you want to call it, right? It's like catfishing for dinosaurs. Basically, yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you had a big tub of, a flat of crawlers. I got a flat. Is this a, I think it's a dozen? Ten dozen. Ten dozen. Ten dozen. So I would just take a big old glob and load them on the hook. Okay. So like those sturgeon have big sucker mouths, so there's no reason to chintz on bait. Okay. We may only get a couple bites a day. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good glob right there. Sometimes I put a little piece of rubber on it to keep them on, but okay. that's sturgeon candy. So sturgeon fishing is like 95% boring and then 5% madness. Yeah. So like kind of similar to hunting. It's just you're sitting, sitting, sitting. And then when you get that bite, you're All dealing with the, the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So with this current, I mean, we're using like a three, four ounce weight right now. The wind's pushing against the current. So this is probably overkill, but more. that less? looks amazing. Okay. No, that looks great. Make sure that hook's exposed. By the way, that should be, yep. should be good. Yeah. I mean, you could really just drop it under the boat and make it happen. But basically what I want to do is just keep it taut and I don't want to drag it along the bottom. You're not going to get snagged here, but otherwise you're just stirring it up. So that's it, we're sturgeon fishing. All right. You keep it in your hand or you put it in the rod holder? Put a rod holder and then have a nap. Yeah, perfect, let's do that. 
And it's crazy because like, if, if you're not used to it, sometimes the bite, it'll look like a perch or a saw, mm -hmm. you'll be convinced it's a tiny fish. And then you set the hook and it's just buckles. The other thing the sturgeon will do sometimes is they'll pick it up and move towards you. And that's the one that you'll get caught sleeping because they'll pick it up and drag it towards you and it'll just go a little bit slack. When they go straight away, it's the easy one because then it's tap, right, tap, tap. Right. So I'm just trying to keep it taut and not drag the weight. Now, how long will you commit to a spot? Right now, with how conditions are, I, I don't know. Like, I think if we if we give it whatever, hour, hour and a bit, and we don't see anything, then we'll we'll move. Yeah, like, I don't know if we want to go into the heart of the river just with how it's raging. You know, it's between debris and everything else. The Rainy River is 220 kilometers long, or 137 miles for my American friends. The river starts at the outflow of Rainy Lake and winds its way west to where it flows into Lake of the Woods. There's an invisible line that basically cuts the river in half between Ontario and Minnesota. Interesting enough, there is no open season for sturgeon on the Canadian side, yet, on the American side, you're not only allowed to fish for them, but they have a catch and keep season. The rainy can have massive fluctuations in the spring due to melt and rainfall. Unfortunately, our trip lined up with some of the worst conditions I had seen. High levels, fast current, heavy debris, this pushed our fishing zone further out towards the lake. So often it's Americans coming into Canada to fish, right? But this time it's it's the opposite for me. I'm coming to the States because it's it's something we don't have access to. Oh, here we go. If you're feeling some taps. Oh, yep. See, look at my rod yeah. tip. Tapped and then it stopped and then yeah. it came and tapped again, but. Oh, there oh, we yeah, go, there yeah, we yeah. go. I hit him. Oh, no. That was a good sign. Oh. There's something there for sure. <gasps> but that rod is. Oh, that was me. Was that you? That was me. I was talking oh. about the rod. <laughs> I was going to tell you about all the big sturgeon this rod's caught, and I tapped oh, it, and you're just like, <laughs> you, Josh. Oh, man, oh, I wasn't even man. trying to trick you. If I was trying to trick you. No, okay, Look, now I know how to get you. I've had all day. <laughs> On fire. Oh. I'm messing with you. No, I'm not messing with you. Oh. Here we go. Oh! Are you messing with me again? Ah! Oh! The first one I think was legit bite, second and third were me. <laughs> That's what a sturgeon bite feels like though when you tap the like that is exactly what it feels like, I'm sorry. <laughs> is that a frog? Huh? It's a frog. Where? Right there. Get him. Oh, nice size frog. Grab him. That's good luck. If you can kiss that frog, it might turn into a sturgeon. <laughs> oh, I think I got a fish. Oh yeah, 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 yeah this yeah. is getting picked up. All right, here we go. I'm gonna reel up. No. Yeah, we're on. Woo! Ooh, baby, that's a sturgeon. It doesn't feel huge. We might just hand land, we'll see, we'll see, but this is definitely a sturgeon. Oh, it's off. No. Oh, oh that was 100% a sturgeon. That's a good sign. That gives me confidence to stay here now. So that makes me feel that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were getting some bites. play. Yeah, yeah, definitely bites. Oh, that's a really good sign. I'm happy about that. It was just so obvious. He picked it up and was just like, woo, 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 woo. It's like the wind died down, it got a little warmer. Yeah. And the sturgeon are just coming in. Oh, oh, what's going on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, do it. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was such a bad hook set. This fish has some up? weight. Oh, uh, yeah, I may as well reel up. Oh, that was so bad because when I set the hook, it just went slack. I didn't know if I actually got hooks into it. All right. Chance number two. This fish has some meat. All right, any guesses on the size on this one? I got no idea, it feels like a good one. Look at the rod just corked. Oof. And they'll just bulldog right below the boat. I'm feeling a little bit of burn. I haven't got a fish this big in a while. <laughs> oh man, this it, it didn't seem that big at the start when I gave such a bad hook set. And now it's like, wow. Rainy river, baby. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. God. Oh, are you able to get under? Oh, yeah. That is a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, wow. unreal. Wow, that's that's oh, my biggest my uh, yeah. that's my biggest lake sturgeon, for sure. <laughs> that's a giant. Look at the size of that fish. So they have just giant sucker mouths. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, you gotta get the tail. For first fish of the trip, I think that's pretty Not good. Bad. <laughs> We'll try to put it on the bump board, but it's 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 got to be pushing 60 inches. Like oh, that's that's my biggest lake sturgeon. This is the reverse bump, which isn't ideal. 58 inches. <laughs> you got it. 
Look, look at that. That's what they're sucking all that stuff up on the bottom right there. All right, help me out. Oh, oh, oh. That oh, man. first fish and that already makes it. All right, we got to let this prehistoric beast back. We're going to slide her, slide her back. Oh, she waved goodbye. Unbelievable. <laughs> Dude. Nice work. It's your turn. That was, uh, that was quite the way to start off the trip. My biggest lake sturgeon. And it feels a little different when you're that close to them on the water. Like, so this is the rig. We got 80 pound main line. I just use a, a chunk of Dacron or you could use like tip up line or the same braid really. The bead swivel and then the octopus hook right there. And just a big old glob of crawlers. <sighs> More of that please. <laughs> Man. But that's why you fish for big fish, right? It's not it's not necessarily a high numbers game. It's Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't turn down a big fish, but I kind of want to catch a smaller one so we can keep it. <laughs> we I, I I do want to eat a sturgeon, yes. So I I think it's uh yeah, it's 45 to 50 to keep one. So I mean, that'll be a more manageable size closer to that 45 inch yeah. and it'll feed it'll feed the crew. We planned this trip specifically around the spring catch and keep season, which this year ran from April 24th to May 7th. With a sturgeon tag, you're entitled to one sturgeon between 45 and 50 inches per calendar year. While we'd crossed a big one off the list yesterday, the goal for today was for Ryan and I to bring one back for the grill. All right, we need to make this happen, Ryan. We need a couple more fish. We started so strong. So basically I'm just letting it hit bottom. You see your line kind of shoot when it hits the bottom and then I'm just Getting that line taut and trying not to drag that weight. If you drag that weight, you're just going to keep stirring it up. It'll be a little tougher for the fish to find it. So I kind of want to just find bottom, tighten it up. I'm using, uh, this is actually like a glass rod, eight foot long, heavy power. This is what people use for white sturgeon too. And you can just lean on these fish. Like the one yesterday, I was just had it bent in half and then big heavy bait casting reel, 80, 100 pound test. Nothing's going to break, you know? If anything, your will will probably break first. Arms will burn out. My arms are kind of burning yesterday. I hear the train a coming. Yeah, sing for us, Ryan. Rolling round the bend. I ain't seen a sturgeon since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Baudette City. Oh, he's hooked up. Woo 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 woo! While we had a bit of a slower morning, people were catching fish around us. I love seeing the excitement in the air. For myself and so many other people in the north, this marks our first time back on the open water for the season. I knew there was sturgeon around us, it was just a matter of time before it was our turn again. Well, our friends uh, Joe and Jesse just caught a nice one. They said it was tagged 57 incher, so that's a great one. Oh, uh, this might be a sturgeon. I think I'm gonna hit it, I, I think that's a fish. Oh no, that might have been debris. It's so tough to say. Oh, there's fish, fish, fish. Oh no, that was, oh, that was him. Ooh, I ripped some lips. Yeah. Is that it? Oh, man. Yeah, oh, here we go, here we go. Oh man. Oh, this is killing me. This is killing me. Well, it's been a pretty quiet day, but We've had four strikes now in the last half hour, so hoping we can cash in. Yeah, every bite's, every bite's a little different. Here we run out of time. Two minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yep, we're on. Yeah! We are finally hooked up. It's been a quiet day, and we had five bites now in the last hour. Ryan, you might have to come over to play net, man. You got the net on yep, your kayak. I'm on it. This might be the right size. It doesn't feel as big as the one yesterday, but... Oh, just sitting straight down. We're doing some fancy maneuvering here. This is a team effort. Wow, this fish is powerful. That must have... That fish yeah. must have... Hit you and came back. It did, I think that was the same one. I think she might come up right beside you here. Okay. You ready? All right, here we go. Oh, in the net. Yeah. I think that might be a little too big. That's a good one. 
All right, we are now tied together. No tag on this guy. So we can keep one per calendar year between 45 and 50. Oh, she was not getting off. There she is on my lap. I think it's a slot. I think it's gonna be close. 47. Nice. Nice, we are gonna be eating <laughs> sturgeon. That is a perfect slot fish. And this is my first time that we're ever gonna, I've never kept a sturgeon before. And um, you know, it's not the type of thing that I wanna keep a bunch of, but I do wanna try it once in my lifetime. And uh, right here, this 47 inch sturgeon is gonna prepare very nicely, I think so. Cool, such a cool, like, I mean, everyone calls them dinosaurs, but that's because exactly what they are. They're such a unique looking fish. Those little sharp pieces on the top, those are called scoots. And on smaller fish, they're a lot sharper. This being a younger fish has, you know, really sharp ones. You know, older fish, they'll get a little more rounded and, and smooth, but so cool. Well, I've notched tags for turkey, for deer. I've never actually notched the tag for a fish before. It's kind of unique. We're gonna notch this, we're gonna attach it to the tail, and then uh, we're gonna head to the kitchen. All right, and a saying that I always like is, if you can't tie knots, tie lots. And I live by that. All right, buddy. Yeah, bud. We good did job. it in the Great last work. hour, so good. Quite literally the last five minutes. Oh, man. <laughs> All of the frustration about missing four in a row, and it was, it was this guy. Um, yeah, my buddy Josh is coming out from Winnipeg. He's making the drive to be our guest chef. And I mean, I, I'm okay at cooking fish, but I'm, I'm curious to see what he's gonna do with it. All right, there must be some lights in here. Well, we got my buddy Josh McFadden made the drive to clean his first sturgeon. You have no experience with sturgeon? Zero. And I have the same amount, so we're gonna tag team this. I think we have an idea of what we're supposed to do. Take the fins off, de-scoot this thing. Yeah, we're gonna cut a nice line to cut that off just so that we're kind of protected. Yeah, the gills are black. Show that. Like this dark purpley, wow, that's so cool. We definitely want to take the skin off, obviously, but we're going to float our knife a little bit and uh, take off that red line that's on the outside. Yeah, that red meat's got a flavor to it. So right here, all of this extra fat, this is like what we want. All of this extra stuff on here. That's what we want it to look like. Red and yellow, yeah, we want it to look nice and clean. That's the thing, I think people probably don't take the time to clean all that off, and that's why smoking is the easy way. That's right. And, you know, they assume frying it isn't good, but I mean, we'll find out, maybe frying it is bad. So this is probably all we're gonna cook today for Josh's dish, and the rest uh, the boys are gonna bring home. What are you doing, what are you making? Okay, the most common thing that everybody seems to say that they have to do with smoked or with with sturgeon. Yeah. Is that they have to smoke it. And I've had smoked sturgeon, you've had smoked sturgeon. Yeah. We've both really enjoyed it, and that's great. Smoking to me almost seems like a bit of a cheating thing when it comes to making fish. So we're gonna sear it. We're doing pan seared. I'm gonna add nice. some cream to it. We're gonna add onions and garlic and capers into a cream sauce. And that's it. Perfect. S seared sturgeon with some cream sauce. So one of the things that we can start with here with fish. Something that's beneficial, just to kind of firm up the texture, helps with the flavor and everything as well. We're just gonna give this a nice salt. We're just gonna use some of our own smoked salt here. This is just a sea salt with a bit of hickory smoke in it and just cover it. If you're familiar with that sort of more rigid texture that fish has when you're eating sushi, this is because it's gone through this process. This might look like a lot of salt, but we're gonna give it a rinse before we actually cook it. That salt is just gonna draw moisture out and cause it to sweat a little bit. We'll have some water in the bottom of the plate. It's just gonna pull those liquids out and again, get that texture a little more firmed up. I learn every time I cook with you.
I haven't yet touched this fish because it hasn't done its thing yet. So when you're cooking meat in a pan, you wanna let it cook all the way through on that one side so that it releases naturally from that pan. You don't wanna move it until it's ready to go because then you'll deal with sticking and things just won't natu naturally release from that cast iron or the steel. So this is kind of getting there, almost close. But if you look at the side as well, the fish hasn't quite cooked halfway through yet. So I'm just gonna wait till we get around that halfway mark and then I'll give it a flip and sear it on the other side. But the best sear is gonna come from just chilling out, relaxing, leaving the meat in one spot. There it is. Very fresh yeah, this one's done, done. Little caper sauce. All right, hit that. We'll use the little sampler too. And yeah, this is everybody's first. First taste. Non-smoked sturgeon cook, yeah. like a sturgeon eating session. All right, here we go. Sauce on there. Try this same piece here. Three. Cheers, cheers. boys. Yeah, cheers, fellas. That is really good. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because the perception and the assumption the whole time has been, oh, it's gonna be fishy, it's gonna be weird, the texture's gonna be off. It's and that's very unbelievable. Very no, it's very mild. Super mild. I'm looking very at you clear. guys, I'm just like, are they gonna like it? Am I gonna like it? It's good. <laughs> it's very good. It's really good. It's definitely got a stronger flavor than like a walleye or a, a perch or something, uh -huh. but not, not in a bad way. No. It's, it's dense, but flaky at, at the same time. Big grains, right? Lots of large grain. It's starting to come apart now that it's cooked through. It's crazy. Well done. Not what I expected. Like texturally, flavor-wise, not at all. Everything I read online before this trip was, well, you told me too. It says, do not place over direct heat. You need to bake it. You need to do this and that, like you said. Awesome. Like that tastes well so good. Good work, buddy. Yeah. That was great. I love good that. Good work to you. I'm glad we caught it. Thanks for having me out. Thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for cooking. Yeah, thanks for catching one. <laughs>